a lot of people, especially this time of year, we're recording this in the beginning of January, uh, people want want change. You know, they want to make some some differences, some do things different this year. Uh, but making that change is often very difficult. And I think a lot of the reason why that's true is our our mindset is lacking. Your mindset is your beliefs, your attitudes. Um, your mindset is basically a filter that influences how you handle challenges, how you handle setbacks, and how you handle opportunities. It's basically how you see the world around you. I would like to say your mindset is like the control panel of your life. Welcome to the Natural Health Matters podcast, where it's all about maximizing your health potential so that you can look and feel your best at any age. I'm your host, David Sandstrom, and this is episode number 135. Today we have on the show, Larry Davis. Larry is a Christian life coach, speaker, and podcaster. He helps people address limiting beliefs, self-esteem, motivation, resilience, and more. He believes mindset is, a critical, is critical to personal growth as it shapes how people perceive themselves and the world around them. Larry, welcome to Natural Health Matters. Hey, thank you for having me. I'm, uh, I'm honored to be here, and I'm, I'm excited about our conversation today. Yeah, I think this is going to be great. You know, you're a mindset expert. You're a health coach. Uh, and I want to get into some of that for sure. But uh, first, let's get to know you a little more. Uh, do, can you give us a little bit of your backstory and how you became a life coach, how you got to doing what you're doing today? Yeah. So um, how I got to doing what I'm doing today is I uh, it was through failure. About uh, a little over 10 years ago, I kind of went I went through a, a low point in my life. Um, I went through a divorce. And I, uh, I found myself in a lot of debt and things like that. And I think I just realized that where I was was a result of me not growing, you know, and I blamed it. I, I kind of sort of blamed it on not having mentors in my life and not having people in my life to show me the way. And although that was true, um, I couldn't I couldn't rest on it. I couldn't just, you know continue to place blame in something else or something that I didn't get or people that, that didn't help me. Uh, and so I couldn't place blame in that. And yeah. so I went through a period of, you know, just depression and just trying to, to, to find myself and just wondering, you know, how did I end up, you know, making all of these mistakes in my life to end up here, you know, alone. I don't, you know, I don't have my kids, uh, you know, I'm, I'm struggling financially and just through that process of just kind of, you know, being depressed, I decided, you know, I, now my background, I grew up in the church. My uh, my grandmother, you know, instilled, you know, helped instill faith in me. And mm -hmm. so I think I knew where to turn, you know, once things, you know, once I hit rock bottom, I knew yeah. where to turn. So I opened my Bible and just started getting in the word of God and, and you know, to, to find myself and just through that process, I started reading and studying, you know, the word and I found myself just doing that so much. So I was spending, you know, seven, eight hours a day just studying my Bible. And wow. through that, yeah, yeah. And then that'll transform you. <laughs> definitely. Yeah, definitely. And just through that, I, I started with the Bible and then I started branching out to other types of books, you know, mm -hmm. other mm -hmm. uh, self-help books, personal development types of books. Yeah. And then. Um, you know, I just started realizing, man, if I would have known this, I would have done better. Like, you know, I would if I, I would have known, uh, I realized I didn't know what I didn't know. And so just kind of going through that process, I, I started learning a lot about how I was supposed to grow as a man, how I was supposed to develop my character, um, and all those things. And then how I was supposed to, uh, shift my mindset. And so just after l learning all of that, reading a lot of books and stuff like that, um, you know, probably a couple of years after that, just me growing myself, I felt God, I heard God say, tell, tell me, I took you through this so that now you can teach others, so you can show others. And yeah. the thing that you was looking for, you was looking for a mentor and you was looking for a guide. Now I want you to be that to other people. And so that's kind of how I got started with the coaching and speaking and podcasting and stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah. That's great. I appreciate you sharing that. You know, uh, the concept of having a life coach is is kind of new uh, for for those that haven't heard of that. So, can you just tell us, you know, what is life coaching? What do you, what do you do for people? Yeah. So, um, life coaching is okay. It's similar 
to counseling, but it's completely different from counseling. So I guess you can kind of look at it the same way, but it's completely different. Counseling is more along the lines of a counselor would listen to you um, and then just kind of try to get you to understand, you know, the things that you're saying and then understand, you know, how you're viewing the world and, and try to get you to, you know, get a, have a different perspective on your on your problems. So basically, a counselor is there to just kind of guide you. They're not going to give you uh, concrete instructions, although they may give you advice, but they're not going to tell you exactly what to do uh, right. because they want you to go through a process of discovery, self-discovery. Yeah. And so and and it's also counseling is more along, you know, deals with things like, um, you know, trauma and, and, and things like, you know, uh, you know, clinical type of, of issues like depression and things like that. Yes. On the other hand, coaching is different. It's not much. It's not. It, it's similar to a, uh, you know, a sports coach or a sports coach is, you know, teaching you and guiding you with learning, you know, uh, you know, how to be a better athlete or learning the plays or learn the playbook and, you know, yeah. trying to get the best out of you. Uh, you know, that's what life coaching is. It's just a guy that's trying to get pull the best out of you, the, the potential that you have. They're helping you to tap into that potential and and uh, reach your potential. And so a coach kind of comes alongside you and kind of gives you some guidance and directions. Um and, you know, also just kind of works with you basically to get you from where you are to where you want to be. So that's how I will sum up a coach. It's just a person, a guide to get you from where you are to where you want to be. I got it. That's that's fantastic. Great description. You know, every pro athlete has has coaching, right? Uh, they wouldn't even think about being a professional tennis player uh, without a coach or a professional PGA golf uh, tour uh, member without having a coach. But yet we, we think we can get through life. As as a Lone Ranger, right? <laughs> how much more so do we need a little coaching? I I, I I I'm totally with you. It's it's a great great thing you're doing. I really appreciate you. Um, so let's let's talk about uh, the Bible. Bible says in Romans twelve two that do not be conformed to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. And I'd love to talk to you know go in depth with you about that topic there about renewing our minds because a lot of people, especially this time of year, we're recording this in the beginning of January. Uh, people want want change, you know. They want to make some some differences, some do things different this year. Uh, but making that change is often very difficult. And I think a lot of the reason why that's true is our our mindset is lacking. We don't have the skills there. So can you talk to us a little bit about uh, you know what what mindset is and how that can help us get through life? Yeah. So your mindset, a person's mindset is, is basically it's, uh, it's your mindset is your beliefs, your attitudes, and it's something that affects your, the way that you see yourself, the way that you see the world around you. Um, your mindset is basically a filter that influences how you handle challenges how you handle setbacks and how you handle opportunities. It's basically how you see the world around you. And, uh, you know, it's, it's just kind of ma your mindset is made up of, of the beliefs that you have, uh, the beliefs that you have of the world. And so it shapes, it's kind of shapes everything you do. It's the, I would like to say your mindset is like the control panel of your life. You know, it shapes what you do. It shapes how you, how you view things. And so if you have a certain mindset, uh, for instance, if you have a poverty mindset, then that shapes how you move around in the world and how you handle your finances. That also shapes what you believe about how much you can earn if you have a poverty mindset, right? Yeah. If, you know, you believe that, okay, I can only make earn so much, right? Right. Or you, mm -hmm. you believe that, okay, God didn't bless me with what talent or, or, or whatever you may see someone else have that has a lot of money or oh, God didn't bless me with that. And yes, God does bless us with different levels of, you know, talent or, or ability or even wealth. Yes, he does. But so I believe that some people don't even tap into what all of God has blessed them with because of a certain mindset that they have. So that's just an example of the mindset. And then, so uh, when we're thinking about, you know, Romans 12 and two, you know, renewing your mind, you know, because you think about what it says, it says, first of all, don't be conformed to this world. 
what is this world? The, this world is things that are man-made, things that we come up with as a society. You know, we have determined, you know, who's rich, who looks good, who's who's cute, who's hot. Like we've determined that ourselves and we've determined who's successful and who's not successful. Those yeah. are our metrics. Mm -hmm. But God wants us to renew our mind to what's true. What did he say about you? What did what are the things that he wants you to think of? Who 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 has he called you to be? So that's where you have to renew your mind and understand that hey, my you know this mindset of believing what the world wants me to believe is not, that's not what God wants me, me to believe. And so it's crucial to renew your mind because when you renew your mind, you understand that, okay, I can have a mindset that's set on the things that God wants me to do and not be fixed on how, what the world wants from me because the world can just decide whatever they want and pressure you to believe that. So that's yeah. kind of how I, uh, you know, does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, I, I, I think I understand what you, I think I'm tracking with you here, and that is to, to not accept the status quo. Uh, be willing to, to look down the road a little bit and say, well, where, what I'm, what I'm thinking and saying and doing right now, uh, where's that going to take me? Uh, what path am I on? Uh, and where would I like to be? Uh, and I think that's what, uh, what really what a growth mindset is, right? I mean, you talk a lot in your YouTube videos about, uh, about mindset, uh, growth mindset. So is, is that what you're, what you're, uh, talking about there? Absolutely. Absolutely. Because a, a growth mindset is a um, is a mindset that to where you believe that um, I, 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 before I tell you what a growth mindset, is, let's take it back to the opposite of that. The opposite of that is like a more of a static mindset or yeah. a fixed mindset. That type of mindset is where you believe that I was born with what I was born with and I can't get no better or I was raised in this family and I can't get no better or I, you know, I'm this, this, this color or this, I'm a man or I'm a woman or, and that's just, you know, that's where you just believe, uh, you know, um, I have this much, uh, you know, this much intellect and this is all I can, you know, I'm not smart like those other guys, things like that. That's kind of, mm -hmm. that's a static mindset. And, yeah. you know, that's where you believe that your abilities and your qualities um, are set in stone and they can't be improved. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. I, this is my station in life. And, yep. But on the opposite side of that is where you have a growth mindset to where you believe that your abilities and your qualities can be improved. It can be developed through learning, through education, through growth, you know, and just through your persistence and seeking out the wisdom and the knowledge that you need to grow. And it also helps you with uh, understanding that you don't have to accept any of those limiting beliefs because you can have a growth mindset and change that. Yeah, yeah, very good. You know, one of the one of the examples of that that I'm that I'm thinking of that's coming to mind as you're talking is uh, the idea that our genetics determine our health outcome, and and uh, we're realizing that that is really not not really true. I mean, we do inherit a certain amount of genetics, and we might have some genetic predispositions, but our lifestyle choices have far more influence on our health outcomes than our genetics do. And in fact, there's so much so that there's a new field emerging. They call it epigenetics. Epi is Latin for above. So it's really not about our genetic programming. It's how our genes express themselves. And it's the environment surrounding, surrounding our cells that, that uh, really determine how, what genes are turned on or turned off at any given moment. And that is uh, far more influence on our health outcomes. There's a great book written on that by Bruce Lipton. It's called The Biology of Belief. Uh, good read. It's not, uh, it's not a light read, but man, it is really eye-opening. He makes a slam dunk case that genes are not destiny. And I just wanted to offer that up as an example of, you know, that, that, uh, that limiting mindset or, you know, I would call it uh, a scarcity mindset, so to, so to speak, that you're kind of born with what you got and that's, that's the end of it. You know, you're just going to have to slip your way through life uh, with, with what you got. But no, there's, there's a lot more available, isn't there? I mean, God has so much in mind for us. He said he came to give us life and life abundant, right? And, but that, that, that abundant life is not going to just arrive on a silver platter. We've got to go after it. Um, so how do you, how do you do that? How do you, how do you develop a growth mindset and how do you, uh, you know, get confidence and build your self confidence in that, in the ability to do that? Yeah. I think the first thing you need to do is you, you have to sit down and kind of do some self reflection, do some self reflection on the things that you are, the way that you're seeing the world right now, the things that you are believing right now. Um, 
and you do some self-reflection and then you know you kind of go kind of look at some different things like okay how what is my response to failure like if i fail how do i respond do i quit do i um uh, do i call myself you know stupid or something or do i call myself bad names do i degrade myself when i quit do I tell myself, oh, you can't, you, you know, you just, you, you're just not cut out for this? Like, how do you respond to failure? Just evaluate that. Evaluate some things that you failed and, and, and what did that do to you? Did it knock you down and make you just stay down? Um, you know, and so once you do that, you can kind of see, okay, how you, you can kind of see the type of mindset you have, you know, cause, because some people are not even aware of the type of mindset they have and they're not aware of how bad it is you know, the, the mindset that they have. And so once you do that, then you kind of, uh, then the next thing you look at is, and it's kind of a series of things you kind of look at, okay, what is my level of comfort zone? Like how often do I get out of my comfort zone? How often do I allow myself to get out of my comfort zone? And when things attempt to stretch me, do I go into that or do I retreat? Um, you know, you can, and those are some things that you kind of look at. And then you kind of look at, okay, what's my effort level? How much effort do I put into something? When something gets hard, what do I do? Do I stop or do I try to push forward? And you kind of look at those things. And that, that and, and those are the things that are prerequisites to understanding just where you are. Because I think that you have to understand where you are in order to go where you want to go. That will give you a good indication. Of, because if you don't do that, what I just said you may think that you're either okay or you just, or you won't have a realization of just where you are in your mindset. And then yeah. once you do those things, then you can start to say, okay, what can I do to respond better to failure? How can I continue to persist when things are tough and things like that? And then how mm -hmm. can I develop my mindset to understand that, okay, this failure is not something that's meant to stop me. It's just meant for me to reevaluate and understand what is there to learn from this? Is there something yeah. I can learn from this? Okay, once I learn, I can learn something from this and then I move forward. And so that's kind of how you can kind of start to um, change your mindset. You just understand where you are today and then start taking those steps to get out of that. Start taking those steps to uh, change the way you view failure and start uh, taking steps to get out of your comfort zone a little. I don't know if that yeah. answers your question. Well, no, it does. And I, there's so much there. I mean, you really touched on a lot of subjects. You know, just because you fail at something doesn't mean you are a failure, right? So it really, it really comes down to identity, right? We've got to know who we are, right? And, you know, if we, just because we, we tried at something and we failed, we came up short of our goal, whatever it was, that doesn't define us. Right. We, we get uh, who we are, our true identity from Christ. Right. And Christ says we're, we're redeemed. We're adopted. We're part of his family. We're his children. We have an inheritance. All that is true. We've got to hang on to that in those moments when we're tempted to our self-talk is we're beating ourselves up. Right. And, uh, and I think a lot of the times uh, we will say things to ourselves in that inner voice, that inner narrator that we would never say to another person. Right. We never say that to a friend. You know, I'm so stupid. You know, I'm always messing things up. I'm such a loser. You would never say that to a good friend, but we say it to ourselves, right? And and to our detriment. And you know, we gotta we gotta shake some of that off. You know, the Bible says Second Corinthians ten five. We're taking every thought captive to the obedience of Christ. So we could, you know, when we have a thought like that, we'd say, wait a minute, is that what Jesus thinks about me? Well, no. Well, then maybe that's maybe that's one of those thoughts that needs to be rejected, <laughs> right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and like you just said, it comes down to thoughts. It comes down to thoughts. What you know, uh, and that's why, um, that's why uh, in the Bible it says, and Paul says, uh, think on these things because, uh, like I was saying, you know, first of all, you got to understand where you are, and then, you know, you got to empty your mind of those negative thoughts, but then you have to put something back in there in order for you to persist, and that's why Paul right. says. Think on these things, whatever is true, whatever is lovely, whatever is pure, whatever is praiseworthy. You know, think on these things because, you you know, you're going to have to renew your mind to think on what's true versus the lies and the self-limiting beliefs that you believe about yourself. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that's Philippians 4.8. 
And yep. it's just a great verse. You know, I love the Bible is so concise. You know, there's so much meaning in just a couple of sentences, a few words, and there's so much meaning in there. You know, we can take those those thoughts that we're having when we're beating ourselves up and say, well, is it true? Is it noble? Is is it pure? Is it is it praiseworthy? No, it's none of that. Well, then that needs to be rejected, <laughs> right? And yeah. uh, you know, the, the Bible is, is is so valuable when it comes to this kind of thing. It's just it's just amazing. I, you know, I don't know how people really. Um, get through life without it, you know, without having some uh, biblical foundation. It just, it just comes in so handy. <laughs> it does. I, it really, really does. Yeah. So you mentioned earlier, Larry, about, about this is how we've achieved success. So how would you define success? So I define success, and when you think about that, uh, I think everybody has their own definition of it. Um, I, you know, I, and I don't even I don't think I've ever looked in the dictionary for what 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 Webster says or whatever. I don't think I've ever looked at that. Uh, but everybody has everybody has a their definition of it of what success yeah. is. Um, mm-hmm. I you know I know the Bible talks about you know in Joshua uh, I think Joshua one eight you know about you know you should have good success. You know yeah yeah I yeah. think. And, and, but hit the success that God that it, you know that it was talking about in Joshua is after you have meditated on this book of the law, right? Yeah. After you have meditated on it and and do whatever it says, then you should have good success. Yeah. Uh, let let me quote it. This I got it right here. Yeah. This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate on it day and night, that you may observe to do according to all that is written in it. For then you will make your way prosperous, and then you will have success. Yeah. So let me get back to what I believe success is as far as, yeah, that, that is a great picture for me, um, mm-hmm. and what God says about success. But mm-hmm. um, if I can even simplify it even more, yes, I believe if you're walking with God, that's first of all, that's the prerequisite for me, is walking with God, uh, meditating on his word, and doing what it says. Okay? Those things are the prerequisite. And then... Uh, because when you're doing that, he's going to give you the inform- whatever he wants you to do in your, in this life, right? Mm-hmm. He's going to give you yeah. your your assignment, and when he gives mm-hmm. you your assignment and you walk in your assignment, that's success because he just told you what to do, you know. And it's when you see whatever God has put in you, when you see that manifested on the outside, um, that's what I call success. Whatever God tells you, and you see it come to fruition, you see it manifested. On the outside, that's what I would like to call success. And it may not look like what somebody else says success is. That doesn't matter. It's whatever you believe God told you. And when you see it manifested in the world, that's what I believe success is. Yeah. And, you know, it's pretty impossible to to discern what God is telling you if you're not familiar with his word. Right, because it all it always has to go back to the word. It have to be, if we believe God's speaking, we have to be able to reconcile what He's saying uh, to His written word. Right. So, uh, and we're not going to know that unless we're reading and studying it. Right. <laughs> yep. Absolutely. So, uh, so a lot of times when people are going after a goal, um, and this is true, especially this time of year with the New Year's resolutions going on, um, they they come up short and they they give up before they realize their victory. Uh, why do you think that is? Why do you think people are, are are quick to give up? I think it goes back to mindset. I think it, it it goes back to mindset. And when you have the wrong mindset, you're confused on the goal. Because sometimes the goal shouldn't be the goal. Like, you may set, and, and there's nothing wrong with goals, but... At the end of the day, once you achieve your goal, it's over. Okay, so, but who did you become? Who did you become? Because a goal is only for a specific amount of time, you know. Right. And so I think people, they're, you know, based on what they believe, they're, the way they set their goals, it may be faulty. And so, and they set goals that are sometimes unreasonable, Right. And if you set an unreasonable goal and you don't reach it, then you get discouraged. But if you had the right mindset, if you had a mindset of growth, maybe you would alter the way you set your goals. Maybe you wouldn't say things like, I'm going to do this in a year. Because if you had the right mindset, you would understand no matter how long it takes me, 
I'm committed to doing this action. Like, for instance, working out or, or, or getting getting in shape, right? If you are committed to you losing a certain amount of pounds in a certain in a specific amount of time, if you fall short, you're going to get discouraged. But if you had a proper mindset, a mindset of I'm just I'm just growing, a growth mindset, maybe you would set a goal to, hey, my goal is to work out for an hour a day, eat this type of nutritious diet, and and then the results will be what they are. Mm-hmm. But my goal is to control what I can control and work out a certain amount of time and do this. And yes, obviously you want to see the scale go down, but right. you can't set that as a goal because that's a that's a that's gonna that is gonna discourage you. And so I think that right. that comes down to the mindset that you have that you to set the proper goal. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. You know, I recently had a fitness expert, Chad Austin, on the show, episode one thirty two, and he talks a lot about uh, you know, if you have a goal to lose 20 pounds, well, after you lose the 20 pounds, then what? You know, what, what what's going to sustain you? And uh, and I know that uh, you need to have more lofty goals to that. You know, you need to say, well, you know, I am I am a son or a daughter of God. That's my primary identity. But maybe a, a secondary or a tertiary identity is uh, I, I'm an exercise person, you know, or I, I, I do, I'm a tennis player or, you know, whatever it is. I, I'm a jogger. And you just keep doing that. And as you said, you let the chips fall where they may, right? Yep. And and you just be true to who you are. Uh, and as long as you have a, the correct identity, uh, that's going to be that's going to be uh, you know uh, set you on the right path. It really it really will. I believe that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, talking about paths, but let's talk about this a little bit. Is your your purpose? How do we stay? How do we find our purpose? And how do we stay aligned with it? Man, that's a good question. So many people. Uh, Ask that question. That's that's the million dollar question. How do I? How yeah, do I find my yeah, purpose? yeah, yeah. Um, well, you know, I think Rick Warren, the guy who wrote uh, "Purpose Driven Life," th- that that book has sold like forty million copies. Yeah, <laughs> this is a question a lot of people have, right? <laughs> but anyway, go ahead. I'm, I'm sorry, I interrupted you. No, you're good. No, because yes, it's the question that everybody has. I'm not going to say it's an easy question to answer. I, I, I'm not mm-hmm. going to say, "Oh, it's just simple as letting God tell you who you are." Yeah, I, that it is that simple. But um, sometimes it's not always that easy, right, to just yeah. let God tell you who you are and what you're supposed to be doing. Right. Sometimes right. it takes a process of, of discovery, you know, mm-hmm. to find out. For me, I know for me, it was a process of discovery. It, for me, it took uh, for me to, you know, hit rock bottom, to me, for me to have some failures in life to discover my yeah. purpose. And what I do now is I try to teach others how to not go through that, even though they may have to go through that. You know, I'm not God. So if God wants to put you through a process, then so be it. You know, he's sovereign. This is, that's what he wants to do. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, so, but if I, if I were coaching people and guiding people, I would tell them, you know, yes, pray to God, seek his will, seek his guidance for your life. Um, and then just put all of your focus on him, put all of your focus on him, Pray, um, you know, study scripture and just say, Lord, I'm here to serve you and I'm here to worship you. And when you do that, he'll start moving you in a certain direction. You know, and I know that seems simple. It sounds simple, but it's but that really it's really not as simple as I'm making it sound. You have to really seek God. And when you seek him and then you say, Lord, I'm here to serve. I'm here to serve. And I'm here to glorify you in everything that I do. And once you do that, the natural giftings and abilities that you have will start coming out and you will start putting your hands on things that you're just naturally gifted to do. And then you'll find your way. Or somebody may tell you, hey, you look, you, you look good in this or you do good in that. Sometimes somebody else will tell you. And so I think that you have to get moving. I don't think that you can find your purpose just sitting on your couch and saying, God, just show it to me. I don't think yeah. it's going to necessarily happen like that. Although it could, again, God can do whatever he wants to do. He can <laughs> do whatever he wants to do. But for the most part, you have to start walking and doing something. So yeah. I would say the first thing you can do is just serve. Just serve. And you want, mm-hmm. and you serve, you'll see, start seeing what your purpose is. And then once you know your purpose then you will understand everything else will open up for you. You'll understand the decisions you have to make. You'll understand the people that you need to be around, 
who needs to be in your life, who doesn't need to be in your life, where you need to go, where you need mm-hmm. to work. Like all those things will start lining up. Yeah. You know, sometimes people are trying to find the job, but find yourself first and then the job will find you. Yeah, you yeah. Know? You know, I'm thinking about the verse. I'm pretty sure it's uh, Matthew 6, 33. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and all these things will be added to you. Right. Yeah. I think this kind of kind of sums up what you're saying here is, uh, you know, if you put God first, um, you won't go wrong. You won't be sorry. Right. Oh, and one more, one more thing. Go ahead. One more thing about purpose. I, t- I, I also tell people this and they don't want to hear it when I say this, but I tell people, especially people who are not not a young, young person, but people who are, you know, ha- have lived a little bit of life, um, you know, maybe 30s, 40s or whatever. I, I tell them, I say, you know what your purpose is. I believe you know it. You know it inside. You just don't want to believe it. Because sometimes yeah. our purpose is that you don't you just don't want you don't want to believe that's it. You know yeah. what it is deep down, but you just don't want to believe that's it, whether it's due to right. fear or just believing that you're not, you know, you're not enough or you, you're not cut out to do that. A lot of times people know what it is. They just they just are hesitant to walk through it. Yeah. You know, Larry, I think that's so wise to say that. Uh, I'm going to share a quick story. I was at a retreat, a men's retreat, about 20 years ago, a little over 20 years ago. And it was put on by John Eldridge and the Ransomed Heart Ministry. And uh, at the end of the retreat, there's probably two, three hundred guys in the room. Uh, John John got in front of the group and he said, hey, uh, in terms of uh, finding your purpose in life, uh, think about, think of, look at it this way. If success were guaranteed, money were not an object, and success were guaranteed, what would you do? And, and I really like that question. And, and I said right then and there, I said, you know, I would write books and talk about the books I've written. That, that, that's just a, a passion. God gave him a passion that God has given me. And a lot of guys say, well, I don't know. You know I have to give that some thought. You know, I don't know. But, you know, when, when you strip everything out, out of the way and say, well, you know, that's, that's what God has put inside my heart. And usually, as you, as you touched on, it's fear. It's fear that gets in the way. I'll never, I'll never be able to do that. I'll never be able to be as good a speaker as Martin Luther King was. <laughs> right. <laughs> well, maybe not. But God has a plan for you, too. And if, he, if you have a passion in your heart, you, you strip all the fear away, you'll see it. It's there. I, I agree with you. Yeah, it's there. Deep down inside, it's there. Um, so, Larry, uh, we're wrapping things up. If, um, if you wanted to just share, so would you share something that you want the people to remember from our conversation today? What was what the most important thing we talked about? Man, I think, uh, I think the most important thing that we talked about was renewing your mind, renewing your mind with the word of God. In this day and age, everything is moving so fast, social media, all these things that all, you know, we got all these voices in our head and it's so much pressure to conform to what everybody's doing. There's so much pressure to, for you to live like the world is living, live like everybody else is living. You know, there's so much pressure to do that. And I just want you to slow down and just, uh, you know, put your mind on God, get in his word and start and renew your mind. Because once you do that, like it says in the scripture, that then you will know his perfect um, plan for your life. You would know his perfect plan for your life. You would know yeah. his perfect will for your life. And that's, at the end of the I day, love it. that's what we're all seeking, to know his perfect will for yeah. our lives. Yeah, that's really good. Uh, you brought this verse to mind, Larry. I want to share it. Uh, Proverbs 4, 20, uh, 20 through 22. My son, attend to my words. Incline your ear to my sayings. Let them not depart from thine eyes. Keep them in the midst of your heart, for they are life to those who find them and health to all their body. That's good. So that's that's the result of meditating on the Word of God and really putting putting things into practice. It'll be it'll bring health. It'll, it'll bring Joshua one eight. It'll bring prosperity. Uh, but you know we're not talking about a prosperity gospel here, right? I mean, there's God's sovereign, and He might uh, allow you to go through a trial. Uh, you know that happens. Uh, we're not we're not going to paint God into a corner and make Him perform for us like a circus animal. That's name it and claim it. No, that's not what we're talking about here. What we're talking about is hey. God knows better than we do, right? And and he loves us with a love that we can't even fathom. And we need to surrender that goodness. We need to surrender to his love, give up our own agenda, and, and put our trust in him, and, and we won't be sorry. All right, Larry. Uh, how, how can people get a hold of you? 
Yeah, so uh, the easiest and most simplest way to get uh, in contact with me is just go to my Instagram. That's where I'm most active on my Instagram. Uh, my Instagram is I am L.A. Davis. Um, and just go there. Uh, you can send me a DM. You can get plugged into all of my, you know, my stuff from there, my content. It's all there. Um, and that's the easiest way to connect with me right there. All right. Real good. Larry, thank you so much for being here today. I appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank you. For more, go to the show notes page at davidsandstrom.com forward slash 135. There you can find links to all the resources that we mentioned, a video version of the podcast, and a whole lot more. If you take nutritional supplements, you want to make sure you're taking quality. I get my supplements from Fullscript. Fullscript has professional-grade, third-party tested product lines that are only available through healthcare practitioners such as myself. If you go to my website, davidsandstrom.com forward slash Fullscript, click on my link there, create an account, and you'll lock in a 10% discount for life. Thank you for listening. I appreciate you. I'll talk with you next time. Be blessed. Be blessed.